Welcome to the third video in our Dyslexia series, Dyslexia and the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. This video series was developed through a partnership between the Georgia Department of Education and the Mary Francis Early College of Education at the University of Georgia. In this video, we will explore the relationship between dyslexia and services offered under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. The video will be organized around common questions that arise when discussing dyslexia and the law. Let's get started. Question 1. What are federal education laws and why do schools have to follow them? To understand a school's obligation to provide services to students with dyslexia, we start by explaining why schools have federal obligations in the first place. In 1965, Lyndon B. Johnson passed the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, which would result in the delivery of federal dollars to public schools across the nation. ESEA, as the law is commonly referred to, was part of President Johnson's War on Poverty, as the goal of the law was to provide a monetary boost to schools, particularly schools in high poverty areas. With these federal dollars came federal regulations. Ten years after the passage of ESEA, the first special education law was passed, the Education for All Handicapped Children Act of 1975. EHA would establish formal protections for students with disabilities. The protections ranged from basic, all kids with disabilities have a right to go to school, to nuanced. Students served under the law are entitled to a free, appropriate public education. EHA was later renamed the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and is now simply referred to as the IDEA. Question 2. What is special education? The law defines special education as specially designed instruction at no cost to the parents to meet the unique needs of a child with a disability. Specially designed instruction is further defined as the adapting, as appropriate to the needs of the eligible child, the content, methodology, or delivery of instruction. Therefore, special education means that what a student is learning or how a teacher is presenting information may be adapted to meet the student's unique educational needs. Question 3. I thought that kids with dyslexia could not receive special education services. Is this correct? The relationship between the IDEA and dyslexia is commonly misunderstood. For many years, administrators, teachers, and parents thought the students with dyslexia could not be served under the IDEA. In an attempt to end this confusion, in 2015, the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Special Education and Rehabilitative Services, or OSERS, issued a letter to state and local education agencies to clarify the relationship between the IDEA and dyslexia. In the letter, the Assistant Secretary of Education stated, I write today to focus particularly on the unique educational needs of children with dyslexia, dyscalculia, and dysgraphia, which are conditions that could qualify a child as a child with a specific learning disability under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. The purpose of this letter is to clarify that there is nothing in the IDEA that would prohibit the use of the terms dyslexia, dyscalculia, and dysgraphia in IDEA evaluation, eligibility determinations, or IEP documents. What did the OSERS letter mean? To qualify for special education services, students must meet two basic conditions. One, they must be identified as having a disability that falls under one of the 13 categories of disability listed within the IDEA, and two, have demonstrated an educational need that is not being met by general education. For a student with dyslexia, OSERS clarified that dyslexia falls under the federal category of specific learning disability, also referred to as SLD. For a student to receive special education services, though, a school's evaluation team would need to determine that the student has an educational need that is not being met by current educational programming. Question 4. My school uses a multi-tiered system of support and RTI as a process for SLD identification. Is there a certain duration of time a student must be in a tier before an evaluation for special education can be completed? As highlighted by the OSERS letter, the road to eligibility for students with dyslexia is not always straightforward. Another possible point of confusion can stem from a school's use of response to intervention as part of a multi-tiered system of support for the identification of students with specific learning disabilities. Again, the U.S. Department of Education stepped in to clarify that the use of MTSS, 
such as RTI, may not be used to delay or deny a full and individual evaluation of a child suspected of having a disability. With this statement, the department clarified that a school's obligation to conduct a full evaluation to determine special education eligibility was not tied to RTI timelines. Question 5. Once a student with dyslexia qualifies for special education, what protections are they provided? Students who qualify for special education are afforded three main legal protections. One, a free, appropriate public education, the delivery of services in the least restrictive environment, and due process under the law. To ensure that a student with a disability receives a free, appropriate public education, also known as FAPE, an Individualized Education Program, or an IEP, is developed for the student. The least restrictive environment means that, to the maximum extent appropriate, a student with a disability should be educated with students without disabilities and not removed from general education settings, unless that student's needs cannot be met in that setting with supplemental aids and services. A parent or local educational agency may request a due process hearing with respect to any matter related to the identification, evaluation, or educational placement of the child or the provision of FAPE by filing a due process complaint. During a due process hearing, each party can present their views in a formal legal setting using witnesses, testimony, documents, and legal arguments that each believes is important for the hearing officer to consider deciding the issues in the hearing. Question 6. What is the relationship between an IEP and the services a student with dyslexia will receive? A team composed of parents, a school administrator, one or more general educators, a special educator, and any person such as a school psychologist who administered an evaluation of the student, as well as any related services personnel such as a speech-language pathologist or physical therapist develops the IEP. The IEP has two primary purposes. First, the IEP must specify measurable annual goals. For example, for a student with dyslexia, an IEP goal may be, by the end of the 12-month period, when given a list of 50 words that reflect first-grade phonics skills, the student will be able to read 45 out of 50 words correctly. The second purpose of an IEP is to identify what, when, and where the special education services, as well as any related services, will be provided to the student and by whom. IEP goals drive the specification of services. What does the student need to learn? Where, when, and how can supports be provided to help the student meet these goals? Strong, clear goals are the backbone of FAPE. Question 7. Can a specific reading program be written into an IEP? Some families may have heard about a specific reading program and they would like the school to use that program with their child. The legal term for a specific reading program, like Wilson Reading or Linda Mood Bell, is a methodology. When a family requests that a specific program be put on an IEP, they are requesting to add a methodology to that IEP. Most schools do not specify a specific methodology with IEPs. There are many reasons why a school may resist incorporating a specific methodology within the IEP. First, the school may not have teachers trained in that specific program or approach or have those unique curricular materials. Second, the school may be providing a comparable approach to reading. In other words, the school may not offer the specific program requested, but they offer similar instruction. Finally, a school may provide a different methodology, but that methodology is reasonably designed to support student progress on IEP goals. Thus, the legal answer to the question, can a specific reading program be written into an IEP, is twofold. One, there is nothing in the law that prohibits the inclusion of a specific methodology. But two, historically, Parents who exercise their due process rights to have a specific reading methodology included in an IEP have been unsuccessful. A handful of recent cases, though, have tied the use of specific methodology to the delivery of FAPE. Question 8. What about accommodations for students with dyslexia? Many students with dyslexia benefit from the use of accommodation. Accommodations allow students to bypass barriers in order to access information or demonstrate knowledge. For example, Students who struggle with spelling and syntax may benefit from the use of writing assistance software such as Grammarly. Similarly, a student who is unable to read grade-level text can benefit from listening to audio versions of those books. Accommodations, however, should not be used as a substitute for targeted, individualized instruction. In other words, 
Academic and functional advancement for students with dyslexia requires structured instruction in the key components of skilled reading. Now let's review. What is the federal special education law? The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or the IDEA. Can the term dyslexia be included on an IEP? Yes. There is nothing in the IDEA that would prohibit the use of the terms dyslexia, dyscalculia, and dysgraphia being used on IEP documents. What is the purpose of an IEP? An IEP is the legally binding document that reflects the free, appropriate public education that a student is to receive. Do IEP goals matter? Yes. IEPs drive the delivery of instruction provided to a student. Strong IEP goals help ensure the delivery of FAPE. Is an accommodation the same thing as instruction? No. Accommodations allow students to bypass barriers. Instruction builds students' academic and functional skills. Many students with dyslexia benefit from the use of accommodations, but accommodations should not be used as a substitute for targeted instruction in students' areas of need. Funding for the Dyslexia series was provided by the Georgia General Assembly. The content was developed by Dr. Kristen Sieski from the University of Georgia. For more information about dyslexia, be sure to check out the other videos in the series.